Android and Raspberry Pi are two of the most flexible pieces of computer tech out there, so it makes sense that you'd want to combine them together somehow. Fortunately, it's not too hard to install the latest Android version on the latest Raspberry Pi model, the Pi 4. And we're going to show you how to do it right now. Hi, this is Phil from Make Tech Easier, and this is how to install Android on Raspberry Pi 4. Raspberry Pi gives you the freedom to install a huge range of operating systems, including some niche operating systems. While systems that were designed for Raspberry Pi tend to provide a more stable user experience, there may be a time when you need very specific feature set, like accessing Android apps. In this video you'll learn how to bring touchscreen support by installing Android 9.0 on a Raspberry Pi 4. While the user experience can sometimes feel awkward and laggy, you'll have multi-touch and touchscreen support, access to a huge variety of Android apps, and the bragging rights that you manage to get Android up and running on a Raspberry Pi. What you'll need. To complete this tutorial, you will need a Raspberry Pi 4, an SD card, a laptop or computer where you'll download the Android 9 system image, a power cable that's compatible with your Raspberry Pi, a micro HDMI cable, an external monitor, or if you want that authentic Android experience, a screen that has touchscreen support, an external keyboard and a way to attach this keyboard to your Raspberry Pi, a mouse or the trackpad on your external keyboard, optionally an Ethernet cable. Once you've assembled your tools, you're ready to get Android 9 up and running on a Raspberry Pi. Downloading Lineage OS 16.0. We're using a build of Lineage OS 16.0 as the base Android 9.0 image. Do note that this build is unofficial and unsupported by the Lineage OS team, and it typically isn't suitable for performing intensive tasks such as playing games or streaming high resolution media. However, here we go. We're flashing this system image to our SD card using the free Etcher application. So if you don't already have this set up on your computer or laptop, then head over to the Balena Etcher website and download the latest version. Now head over to the Gonsta Kang website and download Lineage OS 16.0. Insert the SD card into your laptop or computer and launch the Etcher application. In Etcher, click Select Image and then choose the Lineage OS file you just downloaded. Click Select Target and choose your target boot medium, which in this instance is the SD card. Etcher will now flash the system image to the SD card. Running Android on a Raspberry Pi. Plug the Raspberry Pi into a power source. The device should now boot automatically. After a few minutes, you'll see the Lineage welcome screen. Click Next. Now you'll be prompted to complete the usual setup, such as choosing a language, setting the time and date, and connecting to a Wi-Fi network. Once you've entered all this information, click Start. You'll now be taken to the main Android screen. Don't forget about Google Play. OK, Android should now be up and running, but Lineage OS doesn't come with Google Play installed. To get Google Play, download and install gapps, which includes Google Play, and all the services required to power this application. The device ID APK is needed as well, which will be used to generate a code that identifies the device and allows us to connect to Google Play. Launch the web browser that comes pre-installed on Android and head to the gapps website. Select ARM. Android 9 and Pico, and then click the download button. Next, head to the APK Mirror website and download the device ID APK. Moving the gapps file. To make the next steps easier, drag the gapps file to the root of your storage. Drag upwards from the bottom of the screen to open the app drawer. Find the files application and give it a click. Select Downloads. Find the gapps file that was just downloaded and drag it towards the menu on the left. Release gapps over Raspberry Pi 4. The file will now be easier to find when we boot into recovery mode. Unlock Android's hidden developer options. Developer options need to be enabled, which will give you access to the terminal. Drag upwards from the bottom of the screen to open the application drawer. Select the settings application, open about tablet. Find the build number section and click it repeatedly until you see a you have now enabled developer settings pop up. Navigate back to the settings screen, but this time navigate to System Advanced Developer Options. Tap Root Access in the subsequent pop up and ensure Apps and ADB is selected. When prompted to allow root access, click OK. 
Next scroll to the bottom of the developer options screen, find local terminal and drag its accompanying slider to the on position. You can now exit the settings application. Raspberry Pi needs to be rebooted in order to gain access to the terminal, so press the F5 on the keyboard, which will open a power menu where you can select Restart. Boot into Android's recovery mode. To boot into the Android's recovery mode, you have to do the following. Open the app drawer by dragging upwards from the bottom of the screen. Select Terminal. Type the following command in the terminal window. Su. Press the Enter key on your keyboard. When prompted, select Remember My Choice, followed by Allow. Type the following command into the terminal. rpi4-recovery.sh Press the Enter key and run the following command. Reboot and press Enter. Android will now reboot into recovery mode. Install gapps and wipe the Dalvik cache. To install gapps in recovery mode, find the swipe to allow modification slider and drag it to the on position. Select install and find the gapps package you downloaded earlier. Give gapps a tap and then drag the swipe to confirm flash slider. Gapps will now be installed. Wipe the Dalvik cache by dragging the swipe to wipe slider. When you see the Dalvik wipe complete screen, click the back button. In the upper left corner, select Team Win Recovery Project icon, which will take you back to the main menu. Click Wipe. Drag the swipe to factory reset slider. When prompted, click Back. In the upper left corner, select the Team Win Recovery button, which will once again take you back to the main menu. Click Mount. Make sure Boot, System and Data are all selected and then return to the main screen by clicking the Team Win Recovery Project icon. Click Advanced and Terminal. To reboot the system from Terminal, type rpi4-recovery.sh boot. Press the Enter key on your keyboard. Type the following command into the Terminal. Reboot. Press Enter. The system will now, guess what, reboot. Once Android has booted, you may need to perform some extra configuration, for example, agreeing to the Google Terms and Conditions and setting up a protective pin. Once you've completed this setup, there should be a new addition to your home screen. Google Play is now installed on your device. However, there's a catch. If you try to launch the Google Play application, then you'll encounter a warning that your device isn't Play Protect certified. The final task to make this happen is to generate a code using the device ID APK and then using this code to authenticate the device. Get Play Protected. Registering with Google. To generate the device ID code, open the app drawer by dragging from the bottom of the screen, then selecting Files. Navigate to the Downloads folder. Find the device ID APK that you downloaded earlier and double click to launch. When prompted, select Install. Open the app drawer and select the newly installed device ID application. Once the app is launched, click Google Service Framework. A code will appear in a pop-up. Click Copy. Go to google.com slash android slash uncertified. Log into your Gmail account. Once you're logged in, paste the code from the device ID APK into the register field. Select register. Google will now register this device as a custom ROM and allow you to access Google Play. Your changes only become active following a reboot, so use the F5 key to reboot the system. When your Raspberry Pi has performed its reboot, launch the Google Play app, sign into your Gmail account and you're ready to start downloading Android apps to the Raspberry Pi 4. If at any point you receive an error message while trying to access Google Play for the first time, then try waiting around for 15 minutes as there can be a delay sometimes before Google successfully registers your ID. Although Android 9 wasn't designed for Raspberry Pi, it offers a unique combination of touchscreen support and access to an entire ecosystem of Android apps. Other than that, there are a great many other ways to put the Raspberry Pi to good use and we cover them in a link in the description. Okay, as always, thanks for watching. That's all for now. See you next time.